Hello everyone, welcome to PaaS Summit 2020. My name is Wilver Leader and I'm a software engineer and Microsoft Data Platform MVP based in Auckland, New Zealand. And despite not being able to see you all in person for my first time speaking at PaaS Summit, I'm really excited to be able to present this uh, session to you virtually today. So welcome to this session on machine learning in C-sharp, an introduction to ML.NET. Now, just to introduce myself before we continue, like I said, my name is Wilver Leader. I'm a software engineer working for ASB Bank in New Zealand and also a Microsoft Data Platform MVP living and working in Auckland, New Zealand. Um, if you hadn't guessed, this is not a Kiwi accent. Um, I'm originally from the UK, but I've been living in New Zealand for around about 10 years now, so I'm slowly starting to acclimatize. Day to day, I'm a C-sharp developer. I work with a variety of different technologies, uh, ranging from Azure Cosmos DB, Azure Functions, Event Hub, Service Bus, etc. But I also like to play around with cool technologies when I get the chance, such as ML.NET, hence the talk today. So just to cover what we're going to go through today, um, in this session, I'll go over what ML.NET is, what kind of predictions we can perform using ML.NET, etc. Then I'll talk about the different ways that we can build machine learning models in ML.NET using the model builder, using the command line interface tool, and also the API itself when we want to build more customized uh, machine learning solutions. And throughout the session today, I'll be introducing each tool in turn and also going through some demos. So there'll be minimal slides today and lots of uh, hands-on coding for all of us to enjoy. At the end of the session, I believe that we'll have a Q&A session. So if you do have any questions, wait till the end, pop them in the chat, and I'll be happy to answer them then. All right, so what is ML.NET? Essentially, ML.NET gives us the ability to add machine learning capabilities to both our online and offline .NET applications. We can make predictions using the data available to us um, within our applications. And central to ML.NET is the idea of a machine learning model. This model specifies the steps needed to transform our input data into predictions. Using ML.NET, we can train the custom machine learning model specifying that the, the algorithm that we need, or we leverage other libraries and import pre-trained models. So for example, we can pre-train models using either TensorFlow and Onyx, and then import them into our ML.NET applications. Once we've trained our model, we can then add the model that we've trained into our app application in order to make predictions on the data available to it. Now, what type of predictions can we actually make in ML.NET? In ML.NET, we can perform a variety of different predictions due to the different, ta different types of tasks available to us that we can perform using ML.NET. Essentially, a machine learning task is the type of prediction being made based on the problem that we're actually trying to solve with the data that we have. In ML.NET, we have a variety of different algorithms available to us based on the type of task that we need to perform for our scenario. For example, we might be performing some classification work. We might be presented with a problem where we've got all this feedback from customers on our website, and we need to categorize whether it's positive or negative. We might be predicting the price of a taxi trip, for example, and for that we might use we would use regression. If we were working on applications that were detecting fraud in banking transactions, or if we just wanted to see anomalies uh, for, within our data, we can perform anomaly detection tasks in ML.NET. We can also build recommenders as well, so we could suggest movies, books, uh, any type of products based on past viewing habits or past purchasing habits. We can also perform time series um, tasks, forecasting product sales over time, and then we can do some classical image classification um, tasks as well. Say, for example, is this uh, a cat in this photo? Is this a dog, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, how can we build models in ML.NET? Well, when it comes to building models, we have a variety of different op options available to us. We essentially have two low-code options. So we can use either the model builder tool, which is a graphical um, uh, Visual Studio extension that we can use to build um, machine learning models quite easily. And we also have the command line, command line interface tool as well. 
Or if we need to build more customized models, there's actually an API that the ML.NET team have built that we can uh, use to build more customized machine learning models, depending on the, the scenario and the problem that we're trying to solve. And throughout this talk, what we'll do is we'll go through each tool, what it is and how we can actually build models with that tool. So let's start the model builder. The model builder tool is like a, is a graphical tool that we can use to build, train and deploy custom machine learning models. It uses AutoML, which is just a process of automating the process of applying machine learning to real problems to explore different type of algorithms that we can apply to our data set and it will find the best one suited to the problem that we're trying to solve. Now, the great thing about the model builder tool is that we don't need to be experts in machine learning in order to use it. All we need is our data and the problem that we're trying to solve. The model builder tool will actually generate the code that we need to add our model to our .NET application. Cool, so let's see this in action. All right, so let's kick into our demo for the ML.NET model builder tool. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the model builder tool is just a simple UI tool for developers to build, train, and ship custom machine learning models in into your .NET applications. Um, and all we really need to do to install the model builder is really come to the Visual Studio Marketplace and download this um, ML.NET model uh, builder tool. Um, but I've done that already. So what we're going to do is I've just um, created a very simple um, Hello World um, console application. And what we're going to be doing in this demo is we're going to be predicting prices for um, using regression uh, based on historical taxi fare data from New York. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm actually going to add a folder. And what I'll do, oh, just rename that to data. And we're just going to be reading a local um, CSV file for the purposes of this demo. So I've got existing data. Um, let me just get my data. It's just a simple CSV file. There we go. OK, cool. And just for this demo, just going to make sure that we always copy um, to our output directory just so we can actually read the file. OK, so in order to use the um, model builder tool, we just right click our solution file and we add this mach machine learning capability. So once we've installed the extension, we've applied it to Visual Studio. This option should be available to us to add to our .NET applications. So to start, I'll just click on machine learning. And right away, we'll see um, the, basically a graphical tool which will take a step by step through, through the process of actually building our machine learning model. So we start off by trying to select a training scenario um, for, to, to train our data. And as you can see here, we've got a variety of different options to choose from. So we can do some text classification, some value prediction using regression, which what is what we'll be using. We can do, or we can perform image classification either by using our local machine, or we can actually connect that to an Azure machine learning model workspace. Um, but we won't cover that today. Uh, we can build recommenders uh, using recommendation, or we can um, do some object detection, um, and we can use um, Azure machine learning for that as well. So what we'll do is we'll just click on value prediction. And here is where we would select our training environment. Um, but we're just going to be using our local machine, and you can only use your local machine for regression. Um, so we'll just pick on that. Next step, we, uh, we add our data that we uh, want to use to train our model. Um, and we also uh, pick the column um, or the, uh, the label that we want to, to predict. So when we pick data um, or when we want to select an input for our data, we can either use SQL Server or we can use a file. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick our um, CSV file that I've got in this data folder here. And as you can see, it's just given me a very quick preview of the data that I provided it. So here, what we want to do is we want to predict um, how much a taxi 
uh, trip might cost depending on a variety of different uh, features. So what I'm going to do for this column to predict, I'm going to select the fair amount. And now what I'm going to have to do is pick the features that I want to use in order to predict how much a taxi uh, trip might cost. Um, so what I've got here, I've got a column for vendor ID, so who um, who the company of the of the taxi um, the taxi company which I took the ride with. We've got a rate code, um, how many passengers were on that trip, how long the trip took in seconds, um, how long the trip was in distance, and also the payment type. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to include everything except the trip time in seconds. And those will be my features. So I just click on next step. Next, we have to train our model. So we have to specify the amount of time uh, that we want the model to um, to actually assess different uh, different models and see which one's the best fit. Um, so this uh, default time to train is around about ten minutes. And um, during this ten minute period, what uh, the model builder will do it will assess our data and just iterate it will try different models and iterate um over um over our data within that 10 minute period to assess which model is the best fit for us so i'm going to kick that off uh, and i won't make you watch this so i'll be back in a little while um to see what the results are awesome so now through the power of video editing we can actually see what's happened um while what the model builder has done while it's training on our data so essentially what's happened here is it's provided us with a summary of the training results so it's given us the best quality the best model um how long it actually took to to perform the training and how many models um it explored in total so we've got this light gbm regression algorithm um, and it's got a 91 percent um r squared value um so that means uh this regression would fit 91 percent of um, has a 91% fit and what it's done here it's if you see in the output here we can actually see um, the results of our iteration so every time that it's um, the model is iterated over our data it's assessed different algorithms providing it the, um, an R squared value so the fit of the model um, absolute loss squared loss uh, root mean squared loss um, and the duration of that iterate of that assessment well, the it, duration of that iteration over our data. Um, it's produced a little bit of a, a summary here. So it's uh, shown us the data set that it's um, uh, used, the label it's trying to predict, how long the experiment uh, experimentation time took and how many models it explored. And it's given us um, a top five models explored summary, just showing us all the different models or the top five um, best um, performing models. So once we've trained our model, uh, we can move on to the evaluation state. And essentially this gives us a chance to really try out our model without generating any code. So here we've got some sample data. Um, so if we just click predict, we should be able to see a predicted value that this model will generate. Um, sweet. So now that we've um, evaluated our model, uh, we've performed a simple prediction, but using um, just uh, one value. Uh, sorry, one row, um, we can now generate some code. So essentially what this will do, it will add the model and any necessary projects that we need um, to our solution. And then once we have our solution, we can actually um, use this code, uh, inject that into other applications and actually use that to predict um, predict taxi fare um, um, t uh, trips, sorry, predict taxi uh, trips and how much they would cost. So let's add this to our solution. And here we go. So here, if we just have a look in our solution explorer, we've got our model here. It's a serialized zip file. Uh, open up the consume model. See if anything's there. So here we can actually, um, this, this is some code that we can use to actually consume our model. And there's our simple prediction um, on the model. If we look in our console app, if we look at the program, I'll just remove output just for some real estate. Here we can actually um, create a single instance of sample data and we can actually use this to predict. So if we 
uh, if we change some of this values to say the trip took 4.5, um, I think if we just type cash, and what we'll do is, I'll just make that my main, set that as my startup project, and I'll run it. We can actually see a prediction being made in ML.net. Really simple. We didn't have to write any code for this, remember. All we did is we had a CSV file and we just used the model tool, um, a model builder tool to just generate a machine learning model for us. And there we go. We can just provide it with some sample data to get us some predicted um, or how much that particular taxi trip would cost. It's a very simple, very straightforward way of building machine learning models using the model builders tool. Cool. So before we move on, there are some current limitations to the ML.NET uh, model builder tool that we need to keep in mind when we're using it. So currently, as of the time of speaking, the model builder extension currently only works on Visual Studio, Studio for Windows. So if you have a Mac, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to use this extension. There is a training data set limit of one gigabyte. But if you're using SQL Server, that also has a limit of 100,000 rows for training. So those are just some important things to keep in mind when you're using this tool. Oh. My slides are doing something funky. All right, cool. So now let's move on to the CLI tool that ML.NET provides. So essentially what the CLI tool is, it's a .NET Core tool. Essentially, you provide it with a machine learning task and a training data set. And what it will do, it will generate an ML.NET model as well as some C-sharp code that we can use to run the model within our application. Now, with the ML.NET CLI tool, there are some positives and negatives. On the negative side, we are currently limited to the types of tasks that we can use in the CLI tool. These are limited to classification, reg regression, recommendation tasks, and image image classification tasks, but more are being added um, as the tool develops. So it is worth to keep an eye on. However, the positive of this tool is it's cross-platform. So unlike the ML.NET model builder tool, it works on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. Now, when we use the command line, uh, command line tool, it will generate a serialized zip file containing our model, along with a C-sharp solution that we can use to both train the model again for future use and to run the model so we can make predictions in our .NET applications. We'll also get a log file that shows us all the information of all the multiple algorithms that were assessed and evaluated. And essentially, we can use this to investigate other algorithms that we used and that the tool actually, um, actually assessed. Uh, so if our scenario changes, we can use this as a source of investigation. All right, cool. So let's jump back into another demo and go over what the ML.NET CLI tool can do for us. All right, so now we're going to do a demo of the command line interface tool um, with ML.NET. And essentially what we're going to be doing, we're going to be performing our same regression demo and demonstration. So we're going to be trying to predicting um, how much taxi trips cost based on some data set, uh, based on a data set that we have. Um, but this time we're going to be using the command line interface tool. Now, with the command line interface tool, this is just a .NET tool. So if we wanted to install it, we all we'd have to do is just type in .NET tool, give it the command of ins uh, install, and we can install it as a global tool, and just type ml.net. Um, but I've already done that for you, so if we just type in ml.net, we can see that we can provide it some options and commands. Um, so we can actually tell uh, the command line interface tool what kind of machine learning tasks that we want to perform. So as you can see, we can perform classification, regression, recommendation, or image classification. And what I've got is in this directory here, I've just got a taxi fare train data set. This is a CSV file, and that's what we're going to be using to try and build our machine learning model. Um, so what we're going to do, just going to shut that down for a second, um, and let's start actually using the tool to build um, our model. So what I'm going to do is just type in, I'm going to start by saying mlnet, saying that's the tool I want to use. 
Then I'm going to give it command, telling it what kind of machine learning task I want to perform. And we're going to be performing regression. So I'll just give it the parameter of regression. Then I need to provide a data set. And what that's going to be, that's going to be the CSV file that I've got here, which is called ta taxi fare, oh, not fart, <laughs> train, and that's a CSV file. Cool. Then we need to provide a label column. Now, this will be the value that we want to predict. And this, of course, will be our fair amount. Now, this needs to be an integer value. So if I open up my CSV file, we can see here that we've got columns for vendor ID, rate code, passenger trip, and here's my fair amount. Now, this integer value, this works on zero base indexing. So this column would be column zero, column one, two, three, four, five, six. You get the idea. So what we're going to be saying is in our command, we're going to point to column label column six, and that will be our label since that's our fair amount and that's what we want to predict. Let me shut down this file, make sure it's not used by another process. Okay, now we need to um, tell the uh, command line tool whether this file has a header or not. This is just a, oh, not had, has. This is just telling, a, uh, telling the command um, line interface tool whether this file has a header or not. In this case, it does, so we'll set that to true. And then we need to specify how long we're actually going to be training our model for. So this is just train time. And this is provided in seconds. So I'm going to do a similar time frame as to what we used in the model builder tool. I'm going to say we're going to train this for 10 minutes. I press enter. And now the uh, command line interface tool is starting to train and doing the same thing as the model builder tool. It's iterating over our data, assessing which algorithm is going to be the best performing one for our situation for the best one to try and predict that uh, fair amount. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that cook for 10 minutes. And uh, when that's over, with the power of video editing, it will be a couple of seconds for you guys. We'll see how that's coming along. Cool, so we're back. Um, so we've let that run now for 10 minutes. And as you can see, what the command line interface tool has done, it's just iterated over our data, assessing which kind of algorithms, um, just assessing their fit um, and just seeing how effective they are. And again, as with the model builder tool, we've got this nice little summary saying which task we um, asked uh, the command line interface tool to investigate, what data set we used, what our label was, how long uh, the experiment time took, and how many models were explored during that process. And once again, it's um, suggested this light GBM -G uh, regression um, um, algorithm. And what it's done, it's actually generated a couple of assets for us. So what we've got now, we have, I'll just open up Visual Studio. So we will now have a console application um, to actually make predictions. And we've also got um, a serialized model and some training code that we can use to generate the model as well. Um, so let's ha just have a bit of an explore. So this model um, is really a class library that we can use. So there's our serialized model. Here's our generated data classes, the, the input for the model and what we expect as an output. Let's just open that. So yeah, we can see um, what properties we need to input to train this model again in the future and also the output which will be the score as long as, along with our um, um, serialized model and then let me just remove this output for some real estate and then here's um, some code that we can use to consume our model in applications and then we just open up the console app again there's our program file and there we go again we're just um, in this main method, we've got some sample data that we can provide it and then we can actually use that to test um, any predictions. So we've got our consume model um, class here, calling predict on it and then just parsing through that sample data through that. So there you go. That's just a really simple way. Um, all we did is we just provided um, a simple uh, command line interface tool, just a few commands, just telling it we want to perform regression. Um, provided it a data set what feature we wanted to sorry what label we wanted to use to predict and we just gave it a time to train and just some 
with the command line interface tool and the model builder tool, these are two really easy, easy low code ways of just generating machine learning models for us and also some code to actually allow us to consume those models so we can actually take this code maybe do a little bit of refactoring but just apply that code in a really simple format um, or a really simple way to just apply that code to our existing .NET applications um, so that's the the command line interface tool all right now that we've discussed the command line interface tool and the model builder let's jump into the ml.net api now essentially the api starts with something what we call an ml context uh, this is a singleton object that contains something called catalogs. Now, these catalogs provide methods for performing a variety of different operations that we need to perform when building machine learning pipelines. So we'll have catalogs for loading our data, preparing our data for our pipeline, applying and training the algorithm that we want to use to solve our problems that we, we need to solve um, using ML.NET, and then also using the model once we've trained it. Let's start with getting our data. Now, using the API, we can load our data from either files or other external sources. So we can load data from a single file, or we could have multiple files within a single directory, or we can even load multiple files in multiple different directories. We can also load data from a variety of different relational data stores that are supported by the system.data namespace. And this includes SQL Server, Azure SQL Database, Oracle, SQLite, Postgres, and, and many, many more. Or perhaps our data, um, we can perhaps our data is in a JSON format or XML format, or maybe we can just we just need to load data in in memory collections, and we can do that using a method um, called load from enumerable, using a method called load from enumerable. So. Essentially, we can use this method to load um, data from in-memory collections, JSON, and XML sources. Now, this method does assume that the I enumerable object that from which we load our data from is thread safe. So it is, um, it's important to keep that in mind. Now, when we load our data, we load them into something that we call a data view object for transformation. And data view objects are core to pipelines in ML.NET. Each transformation that we perform will have an input schema. These are the data names, the types, um, and the sizes that the transform expects to see as an input. And, we, and a, tr a transformation will also have an output schema. And this is the data names, the types, and the sizes that the transform produces after the transformation. Um, and essentially, if these don't match, ML.NET will actually, the application will throw an exception. So it's important to keep that in mind. Um, and data view objects are only loaded and operated on during model training, evaluation, and prediction. Now, once we have our data, we'll need to prepare it. And we need to prepare our data in the format that is expected by the algorithms that ML.NET provides. And this may involve cleaning our data, working with different types of data, replacing missing data, etc., or to make our data acceptable for use in our ML.NET applications. Now the data operations catalog, which is part of the ML context, remember, has a variety of operations that we can use to take our incoming data and produce an iDataView object containing our data ready for use in our applications. Now, depending on the nature of our data and the problem that we might want to try and solve, our approach to how we prepare our data will change. The thing to note that in all algorithms in ML.NET, they all expect a float vector of a known size as an input. So essentially what we need to do is convert our data into numerical format and process it into a features column in order to predict a label. So for example, in this code snippet, what we're doing here is we're creating an output column for the label or the value that we're trying to predict. We are then transforming our categorical data by applying one hot encoding on all of our free in, on free input columns and producing free output columns. Now, if you don't know what one hot encoding is, essentially what this does, it takes a finite set of values and just removes implicit ordering of our data. So just taking, say, the uh, payment type encoded um, field, for example, there might be different values for cash, um, credit card, check, etc. 
And since we need to confirm this into, sorry, transform this into numerical format, what we might do is supply uh, the cash type to be a value one, the credit type to be of value two, and the check form um, type to be value three. And then what one hot encoding does once it applies those set of values to those um, three different payment types, it then removes the ordering because the algorithm might think that three is bigger than one or one is more important than three. And it just essentially removes that ordering uh, for our data and just treats them as finite values. Once we've transformed our columns, we're then concatenate, concatenating them into a vector column called features. After this is done, we then append the algorithm that we want to use to solve our problem. In this case, we're using the fast tree regression algorithm. And then once our data is processed, we then use the fit method to train the machine learning model with our regression algorithm. Now, in order to make a decision on how well our model will perform, we need to evaluate its performance on test data. Um, traditionally, what we do, if we have a large data set, we would actually split that between trust and test training data, sorry, test data and training data sets. And then once we've done that, we can actually evaluate the model on the test data using the evaluate method. Now, depending on the machine learning task that we're trying, that we're, you, that we're performing, sorry, there will be different types of metrics that will be generated. But let's take a look at this example. So in this example here, what we're doing is we're just loading our test data into a data view object and then using our defined model to make predictions on our test data. Now, what the evaluate method um, does here, it, this applies to a regression model. So what we're doing is we evaluate our predictions to the label that we're trying to predict along with its score, extracting the R squared metric. Uh, in the demo, what I'll do is I'll actually um, put in breakpoints and we'll go through it step by step and you can see what kind of metrics you can actually ge generate from regression. Um, but bear in mind that different types of machine learning algorithms will have different metrics. Um, so you'll need to just keep that in mind if you're using different types of um, algorithms depending on the uh, problem you're trying to solve. And then once we've built our models, uh, they're only available in memory. So when we stop our application, we'll actually lose our model. But in ML.NET applications, what we can do is, in order to keep our model, we can save it. Uh, and the process of saving and using models in ML.NET are universal to all different types of algorithms that we can actually use in ML.NET. So it all applies to whether we're using regression or classification or, or whatever. When we save the model, we need two things, the model and the data view schema of the model's expected input. And then when we load our model, we can simply call the load method if loading a model that's stored locally, or we can use a stream to load a model that's stored remotely. And then once we have our model, we can uh, input data to make bulk predictions, or we can input a single prediction to make a single prediction at a time. Now, for this purpose, in this slide here, we've created something called a prediction engine, which is a class that helps us to make predictions. So in this example, what I'm doing here is I'm calling the predict method here and passing both the model that I want to use and some input in order to make the prediction. Now, this is fine for single predictions, but bear in mind that this prediction engine um, um, object isn't thread safe. So if we're making single predictions, that's okay. But we might be building applications that make multiple predictions we might have multiple different callers um, making, trying to make predictions using our model. Um, and in this case, what we'd have to do is we'd have to create instances of this everywhere in our application. And as our application grows, this becomes unmanageable. However, there is a thread safe option, and this is called a prediction engine pool. Um, and we'll see this later on in the demo that I've cooked up. But essentially what you can do is, combined with dependency injection, you can use prediction engine pool and what it will do, it will create an object pool of prediction engine objects for use throughout our application. And now just to take a, a look at the, the high level overview of the ML.NET API um, workflow. So when we use the API, this is we would use this when we want to opt for a code first option to build more customized models um, than we might be able to build using the model builder tool or the CLI tool. Now, like the CLI tool, um, if you're using .NET Core, it runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. 
However, if you're using the .NET framework, you are limited to just um, using Windows or building applications on Windows using the ML.NET API. And in this, um, in this diagram, essentially what I'm doing here is just showing you the simple basic code workflow of building and using um, a model in ML.NET. So we start with collecting and loading our training data into our iDataView object. We'll then specify a pipeline of operations in order to extract features and apply a machine learning algorithm. We'll then train this model by calling fit on our pipeline, and then we can evaluate that model and iterate, um, iterate on this process if we need to improve the effectiveness of our model. But if we're all good with our model, if it's, um, if it's a good fit on our data and the problem that we're trying to solve, essentially what we can do is we can save this model into a binary format using the save method, and then load that model back into our application using an iTransformer object. And we can make predictions using this model by calling that create prediction um, engine object again. All right, let's see all of this in action now with a demo. All right, for this demo uh, of the ML.NET API, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this in two parts. So our first part will be a code, code along type demo. So what I'll do is we're gonna build, we're gonna take our same um, taxi cab uh, fair prediction uh, scenario. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a console application first off and just build that up from the ground up. So that means installing the packages, creating the required data classes, loading it, choosing a training algorithm, training the model and evaluating it, and then using it for prediction purposes. And then in the second part, what I'm going to do is I've actually built a more end-to-end -end solution. So we're going to be doing the same things, um, but I'll actually show you the code this time and what I'm going to be doing is uploading a trained model to Azure Storage, and then we're gonna be using an Azure function, which will essentially just be a serverless API that then loads that um, um, data model from uh, our blob storage, and then uses it when making predictions within the API. But let's start along with the code along first. So what I've got is, I've got a simple uh, .NET Core console application, and I've got my taxi fare training data here. And what I need to do is, I know that we're going to be doing regression and I want to use FastTree. So first up, we actually need to install Microsoft.ml um, to actually use the ML.NET packages for us. So let me search for Microsoft ML. And we can just install the tool simple as that. And I'll also need to install Microsoft.ml FastTree once that's installed. I'll show you that for different types of algorithms, there will be different packages that you need to install. So one potential thing that you can do when developing this and when d diving into the API, um, if you're not too familiar with machine learning algorithms, you can use tools like ML, um, like the model builder tool or the, um, the CLI tool to say, okay, I want to maybe use regression, I want to use classification, run that tool over some training data set and then you can actually determine what algorithm you're going to be using and then see what package you need to um, install um, into your .NET application. But for now, we know that we're going to be using FastTree regression. So I'll just install, install uh, Microsoft.ml.FastTree. Hopefully that won't take too long. Yes, that's okay. All right, sweet. So in our dependencies, we should see in our packages, we've got Microsoft.ml and Microsoft.ml.FastTree ready and raring to go. Fantastic. Okay, so I've got my data set here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually, what I need to do first is I need to provide a input class definition and an output class definition. Remember that with ML.NET and in transformations, we expect both an input, so the data that with feeding um, ML.NET and then the output, so the predicted value that we want to, to generate as an output essentially. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a new class. I'm gonna call it a uh, taxi trip input. Okay, and what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy and paste some code just so you don't have to watch me type all of this out, even though you're probably enthusiastically wanting me to. We've got a lot of compile errors there. I'll just make this public. What I'm gonna do is just import Microsoft.ml.data. Now, what these load columns are, I'll just get rid of this um, 
output here just for some real estate. Sweet. Okay. So remember when the command line interface tool, when we specified a feature uh, column, oh, sorry, a label column that we wanted to use, uh, we had to provide it an integer. And this is essentially an integer of working on zero based indexing to say which column is associated with which property. And that's what we're doing here. So this load column zero for vendor ID will equate to a column called vendor ID in our CSV file. So we've got column zero, column one, column two, et cetera, et cetera. And those will match the column names that we have in our CSV training data. Okay, so I've got my input. So now what I want to do is create an output class. So I'm going to call this one taxi trip output. Just add that. I won't copy and paste this one. Go public. We're going to create a new column when we make um, predictions. Oh, spell column right. I'll actually import ml.net.data while we're here. Give this uh, name of score. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a float because remember our fair amount is also a float. We just call this fair amount. Cool. So this will be our predicted um, predicted label that we're going to be uh, wanting to predict. So we've got our input and our output um, output schemas. So if I'm going to go back into my program class, what I'm going to do is I now need to define my data and model paths. So what I've got here in this data folder here, I've got some training data sets. So at the top here, just outside, I'm going to make this global. We're going to go uh, we'll make some private static this read only string and this will be my training data path. And what I'm going to do is since it's just in our local directory, I'm just going to read it from my current directory. If I can spell environment right dot current directory, then tell it what folder it's called, which is data. And that will be our whoop, taxi fair train.csv file. And then I'm going to get, uh, provide my model name. So again, we're going to make this private static. Again, this will be read only. It's a string. I'm going to just say a mod. Give this a model path. And essentially, we're just going to be doing it in um, in our current directory as well. So just say the current directory, I'll stick it in that data folder as well. And we're just simply going to call it model.zip. And this will be our serialized file um, that we're going to um, save our model to. All right, let's get rid of this hello world um, instance. Okay, so now, now we need to train our model. So first, okay, let's start from the beginning. We need to load our data. We need to extract and transform the data, train the model, and then we'll have a model that we can use um, in this application. So in order to load our data, we're going to need an iDataView object, which is just really an efficient way, or it's just really a, an object that we use in ML.NET to describe numerical tabular data. Um, what I'll do, remember my own advice, so I'll just say ML context, just create a new version of ML context right here. And then you'll see with this ML context, we'll have a variety of different catalogs that we can use for the purposes of building our machine learning model. But since we're loading our data, we're going to be using our data catalogs. And we're going to load from a text. Oh, sorry, I'll just open that back up. We're going to load from our text file. Now we can also, there's our load from my enumerable. We could also load from a, CS, um, from a SQL Server database if we, if we wanted to. But since we've just got a file, I'm just going to say load from save file. And my input class, I'm going to use my taxi trip input as my input class. And so what I'll use is we've got my training data path. That file does have a header. So we're going to set that to true. 
the ooh, yeah the separator character is just a comma. Make sure so have I missed anything out? Actually, I wasn't. It's not a string. It's a character. Cool. So that will be my input um, data view that we're going to be using. And now I need to build a pipeline. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create var pipeline. Use my ML context dot transforms. And we're going to copy some columns. So essentially, yeah, we're just going to copy, fi, copy sorry, the um, columns specified in the input column name to a new column for an output. So just do that. So my output column is what we'll call our label. And the input column, because we're predicting uh, the fair amount, we'll just say fair amount. Cool. So now we've got a pipeline and our input um, in column. But with this pipeline, what I want to do is I want to do some data transformation. Because remember that it, the algorithm that trains the model will require numeric features. So in my data file, I've got categorical data uh, for vendor ID, rate code, and payment type. And what I want to do with this, I want to convert those values into numbers. And then I want to use one hot encoding to remove any um, ordering of those numbers. And this is fairly straightforward. So all we need to really do here, we can actually append to our pipeline, use our ML context, and using the transform uh, catalogs, we're doing we're working on categorical data and using one hot encoding. Very simple. Uh, and again, you know, we've got our output column name. So we're going to say for this one, it will be, we need to provide it a string input vendor ID encoded and the input column, input column name will be vendor ID. And I'll just copy and paste uh, the code for rate, co uh, rate code and payment type. So you don't have to sit there and watch me type it out using a trackpad as well, which is probably not ideal. And I'll just make sure that ML context is spelled correctly. All right, cool. Let me get some more real estate here. Just make sure we don't have any compile errors. All right, move that. Okay, cool. All right, and then the last step in building this pipeline is actually uh, concatenating all of these features together. Um, so we can actually, so concatenating all of these, um, all of the columns into a new column called features. So we can actually um, use them to predict our label. And that's very straightforward. We're still using our transformation um, transformation catalogs, and we're just concatenating. As you can see, we've got an output column name of features, and then we've just got a parameter um, of strings uh, that associate that are associated to the new columns that we want to include as our features. If I'm missing. Awesome, cool, all right. So now that we've transformed our data, we now need to choose the learning algorithm that we're gonna be um, using in our pipeline. So what we'll be doing, we're gonna be using Fastry. So let me see if I can just append. Yep, all right, so I'm gonna go back to my ML context. context. Remember, everything in the API starts with an ML context. And then I can apply regression onto it which uh, provides us access to trainers and tasks specific to regression problems. Get access to trainers. And we can choose fast tree. Straightforward, right? So there, a very simple pipeline. What we've done is we've copied some columns. So we've got an output column of label, um, which we've used um, uh, our fair amount as an input. We've then done some one-hot encoding, um, just essentially 
getting out categorical data fields and then turning them into numeric values, concatenating all of our features together into a, uh, a vector array for features column, and then just applied um, the fast tree regression um, task to our pipeline. So now, in order to actually build and train our model, we'll create a new variable called model. We've got our pipeline. We'll fit that pipeline onto our data view. Straightforward, right? So there's um, a real simple way of actually building and um, building a model using our API, uh, using the ML.NET API. Cool. So now that we've got our model, we'll want to make some. We we'll want to evaluate it to see if it's of a good fit or not. Uh, and this is fairly straightforward to do. So what I've got here is I've also got some testing trainer testing um, uh, data that I'm going to be using to test our model. And again, it, to use this um, um, testing testing data, we'll need another i data view object. I'm going to call this one test data view and it's very much the same thing so all we need is our ml context we'll use the data catalog to load from our text file our input will still be the same so it'll still be that taxi trip input but this time we'll just spec um, we'll just give it our test data path again this file does have a header so we'll set that to true and the separator character Can't spell separator. It's columnar. Well, it's comma, so we'll just give it a comma. Okay, so now we need to evaluate our model. So what I'm going to do is just var it a new variable called um, what can I call this? I'll use use our model and apply a transform onto it. So we'll take the data in, make transforms, and output the data. This is just to validate our schema and then pass through our test data view. Now, we can then use this predicted values, I believe, yep, we use this um, transform data view to then really evaluate our model and assess our model. So what we'll do is we'll create a variable called regression metrics. what we'll do, we'll use our ML uh, context, get our regression catalogs again, but this time we're going to evaluate. And we'll pass through our predicted values. And then we need to provide it both the label column name and also the score column name. And luckily for us, ooh, not sure what I pressed, nothing consequential. Just give it label and score and then once we've actually done this we can actually we can access um, oh, the the metrics um, um, to assess um, how um, how well this model fits um, um, on our on our data and then after this we would want to make some predictions so what we'll need is we'll remember we'll, is our create prediction engine object. So again, use our NL context. Everything starts with NL context. We'll be using our model catalogs and we're going to be creating our prediction prediction engine. Now, in order for this to work, we'll need to specify our input schema and also our output schema. And luckily, we've created our classes to do that. So we'll just give it our input class and our output class. And then here we need to actually provide uh, the model that we're going to be using to make predictions. And luckily for us, it's just our model. And all we and just remember that the prediction engine is just really an API that allows us to perform a prediction on a single um, instance of data. So this example that we're using, remember, is not thread safe. Um, if we're just building prototypes using the API, this is perfectly acceptable. But remember, in the example that I'm going to show you in a little bit, we're going to be using a prediction engine pool, 
which is more thread safe and um, because it will create an object pool of prediction ed engine objects that we can use throughout our applications. So let's give this some sample data. So what I want to do, I'm just going to say for um, create a new variable called taxi sample. And this will be a new instance of my input class that we're going to provide it. I'll just copy and nope. Don't want that comma or a semicolon there. Um, but what I want to do, I'll just copy and paste this code. And this will be our sample data that we're going to be using. And then in order to make a prediction, taxi prediction, really regretting these variable names, but I'm just doing this on the fly. So we've got our prediction dot predict taxi sample. All right. So what we're going to do, we're just going to, I'm going to, Put a breakpoint on regression metrics and I'm going to put a breakpoint on prediction as well just to see what those values are. So let's give this a run and see what happens. Hopefully the console application actually opens up on this point. Nope. I'm going to drag you to this screen. That's fine. Okay, so we're not really recording any output here. Well, what I'm hoping is once this model is training, we'll be able to see some metrics that we can actually um, peek into once it hits this point. All right, so we've hit this breakpoint here. So we've got our model, got our predicted values object, got our input schema, output schema as well. So if we press continue, and then if I hold over that metrics count. Hopefully it won't take too long to... All right, just had to pause for a second, make sure it was working. But as you can see here, we've now got some metrics that we can use to determine whether or not um, this model is of good fit. And this will differ depending on the type of machine learning tasks that you're actually going to be using. So these are specific only to regression tasks. Um, if you're using classification, um, image classification, um, sentiment, whatever, recommenders, you get different types of metrics. Um, if we press continue on that, and then we've got our taxi sample to make our prediction here. So what I'll do is I'll put a breakpoint there just to make sure that we can see it. And then we've got a prediction there of $14 and 63 cents. And we can actually use this um, to, to provide some output if we wanted to. So that's a simple kind of, you know, very bare bones building from the ground up example of um, building a machine learning model using the ML.NET API. So in this example now that I've got, I've got this more, it's more of an end-to-end -end example. So I've got essentially two Azure functions. Um, so one for our model trainer and then one for an API. So here in this model trainer, um, what I've got is I've just got a simple function that essentially creates our, reads our, lo um, our data file from our local directory. So again, much like the application we had earlier, we've got our testing and training data in a local directory here. It loads that up, applies the same pipeline to it. And then here, remember when we generated some um, metrics um, after when we evaluate our model, we can use that to just assess whether the model's a good fit or not. And there we just upload um, our model to blob storage. And then in this API that I've got, the big difference that I want to show you, if we go into this startup, here I'm creating my prediction engine pool in the startup. Now this is very specific to Azure Functions, but essentially when this API starts up, it will um, load this um, prediction engine pool and it will make available this object pool of prediction engines that are um, uh, uh, prediction engine objects that can be used throughout our application. Now in this example here, we're loading our model from a URI um, or from a URL. So there's the the URL hosted um, of the URL of my model that's hosted in Azure Storage. 
I've given it a model name. We can give this model um, any name that we like, but then when we use it for our application, this is the name that we'll have to use. And then we specify a period. And essentially what the from URI uh, method does, it will pull that URI um, every in within this specified period. So here I'm polling it every minute and it will just detect any changes in our model and then load that instantly uh, once those changes have been detected. Now with the prediction engine pool, if you have a remote location, you can use the URL, but if you're using a local file, you can also load from a file directory as well. And essentially it works on a polling system as well, where it will pull that file, um, that pull that directory for any changes to that specified file. And then when we actually make predictions here, it's just a real small example of reading in, um, reading in a JSON payload um, from a from a post request. Uh, create, we've got a new taxi insert object here that will actually insert the prediction into Azure Cosmos DB. So this is more of an end-to-end -end example of actually using ML.NET in our applications. Cool, so just to recap what we've covered. Well, my thing's doing funny tricks again. Cool, so we talked about at a very high level um, what ML.NET is and what type of machine learning tasks we can use uh, and what type of predictions we can use um, within ML.NET. We also then discussed um, the model builder tool, the command line interface tool, and the API, as well as going through some demos about how you can actually use these tools to very simply and very quickly build machine learning models if, or, that you can use and infuse into your .NET applications. If you want to learn more, um, I've added a bunch of links here, links here in the slide, which I'll make available, um, but there's loads of GitHub samples uh, for different types of scenarios and different types of machine learning tasks that you can use, which are really cool to um, um, just explore if you want to get your hands dirty with the code. Um, I've also added a link to the ML.NET documentation. It's a really valuable source I found for when I was first using ML.NET and first getting into it. I've added a link to um, one of the demos that I've uh, showcased today. It's essentially that serverless price predictor of actually training and then loading that, um, saving that model to Azure Blob Storage and then loading that model back into an Azure function and showing use of that prediction engine pool to make it more thread safe and how you can actually make predictions throughout your application. I've also added links um, for installing uh, the model builder tool and the CLI tool. And I've also added a link to a virtual hackathon that's happening in a couple of weeks. Um, it's all focused around ML.NET. So if you're keen to get your hands dirty, work with other developers, uh, and find out a little bit more about ML.NET in a more hands-on and fun scenario, I definitely recommend checking that out. So thank you so much for joining my session today. Um, I've done this session a couple of times, so I'd be really grateful for any feedback that you can provide so I can make it a bit better. Uh, what could I do differently? What could I have done better? Um, and if I did anything good at all, I'd be really appreciative appreciative if you guys gave me that feedback and remember if you submit your feedback before friday the 20th of november um, at 5 p.m eastern standard time remembering my time zones off the top of my head you'd be in to win some great prizes and just before i go i'd really um want to emphasize um doing uh, explore everything that paz has to offer right from local user groups to sql saturdays right up to paz summit uh, PaaS has a lot to offer um, and there are lots of free resources online. Um, so check out PaaS.org before you go. So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, if you do have any questions um, and you haven't popped it in the Q&A chat or if you leave the session and you do think of any questions or if you just want to connect and um, uh, reach out, uh, reach out to me on Twitter at Will Valida. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.